Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, and today we have quite the announcement to make. We, MetaZone specifically, we mm -hmm. are partnering up with Vault Hill City. This is a new metaverse that is leveraging the MetaZone platform to enable a creator economy in their metaverse. That's right, dude. What do you think, man? <coughs> it's a long time. I mean, there's a lot to say about this because. Have you been a, a sponge of the uh, MetaZone gospel over the last couple <laughs> of years, dude? We've been talking about, I guess, our own personal ideals. Yeah. I mean, first of all, like, Metaverse is, like, a now, like, an interesting topic. <laughs> it wasn't in the beginning. Yeah. But now that it's so interesting and, like, it's it's become, like, a ubiquitous, <coughs> uh, I don't know, like, a phenomena of people trying to understand what is the Metaverse. Now everyone coming out with their own interpretations like that's right does the metaverse exist today have we been building it is yeah. it some obscure thing we're not even close to achieving yet so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have our own ideas of like what a metaverse should be and as because we are a content creation platform the metazone ecosystem it's been supporting decentraland for the last couple of years yeah we have our ideals as like as far as like is this the, the bounds and the limitations of like where the metaverse expands to is decentraland it mm. Or is it going to be like this this network of interconnected metaverses that forms, you know, yeah. a much bigger cloud of metaverse experiences, <coughs> right? So Yeah, I'm I'm betting on the network of metaverses. Yeah, just like the same same thing was with the chains, right? Is Ethereum exactly. it? Is Bitcoin it? Nope. It's never it. It's never it. <laughs> Everybody always has their own spin, their own interpretation, their own use cases too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. there's yeah, there's different reasons to have different chains, right? But if you're going to create a, an ecosystem of all these different chains, you don't. The last thing you want to do is silo them off. Right. Right. <laughs> right. We've identified that issue many years ago, and yeah, the industry is kind of like subscribing to that idea, right? They're, they're trying to figure out ways to bridge all the experiences, all the value that's being created on these individual chains, and like create like a you know mm -hmm. highways and passages and yeah, bridges and for sure for connections sure. to that. So <clears throat> we think the metaverse is going to follow a very similar path. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. And if this is the first time you're hearing about MetaZone or hearing about Vault Hill or hearing about the metaverse and all yeah. this, uh, let's take a step back and kind of see how we got here for the, fir for the first part. So, True. so this is the Block Runner podcast, and we actually started the podcast way before we started our project called MetaZone. True. And uh, we ended up interviewing Maddie, which is a DCO blogger. He blew up. I mean, I think we, we when we interviewed him, he had like 3,000 followers on Twitter or something like that. Something like that. And uh, now he has got like 250 or something like that, 250,000. So, but anyway, we interviewed him and he introduced us to Decentraland. And uh, my brother who listened to the podcast was like, let's build stuff in Decentraland. He found a host of all these problems and created a platform that made it easy for anyone to purchase and deploy content onto your land. Mm. And, um, and so we've been working on this project for about good old two years, two and a half years or something like that. Yeah. And uh, our entire premise is for anyone to be able to purchase and deploy content. Yeah. But as we gone through the last two and a half years, we realized that, yeah, there's not going to be a single metaverse. It's going to be a network of different metaverses. Mm -hmm. And so we need to facilitate the ability for anyone to purchase anything and deploy that in any world that they wanted. Yeah. And um, so <clears throat> I think... Vault Hill listened to our podcast like throughout the, the months and, you know, of everything that we've been putting out. And they're aligned with that ideology. Exactly. They, they agree that if developers are going to come in to make content in the metaverse, they're going to make content that has a high, high ROI for them, a high return yeah. on investment. Yeah. And they're not going to make content in, in a bunch of different silos because that's not efficient for them, right? <laughs> They'd rather just make an app for the iOS store or yeah. a Windows application and be done with it because it's easier. There's a higher market uh, uh, for that type of content. And so what MetaZone is focused on is building the tools so that developers can come in and make content. And not only that, make content that is deployable in multiple metaverses. And so Vol Hill is aligned with that. And uh, with them, we're able to deploy not only in Decentraland, but in Vault Hill whenever they launch sometime um, in, in this year. So yeah, <clears throat> this is a big step. This is a big step. This sends a signal to the wider metaverse uh, ecosystem that people are expecting interoperability. And that means that if you're going to spend money on land and you're going to spend money on these assets that go on that land, that asset better be deployable in, in the different metaverses that they exist in. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, 
there's really very little incentive to buy any one thing that can only be deployed in one location. Yeah, it's limiting in, in a lot of different reasons. Like for one, <clears throat> you know, as, as cool and as big as Decentraland is becoming, it still only hosts to roughly four to 5,000 like individual landowner and owners within yeah. the ecosystem, right? With that's, that's, and this is a this is a world with um, how many ninety thousand parcels? Yeah, ninety thousand yeah. parcels. I mean, like uh, roughly half of them are in the control of like uh, they're called district owners. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is like a very early on in Decentraland's like growth cycle. It was kind of like half of it's publicly owned, other half of it's kind of you could districts are kind of like privately owned. But I mean, it doesn't matter for MetaZone. It's 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 integratable. In both cases, mm-hmm. you're a district landowner or a private landowner, you could still leverage the platform to deploy the content that's you know generated by the community. Yes, but the, the point still being like it's still a limited, you know, uh, demographic or economy that like sure. you as a content creator you're exposing yourself to, and that's the problem with all metaverses, right? They're all just again like siloed off, mm-hmm. very minimal like ecosystems, just because of the, I guess the only way to expand it from there is like if if you know create more land. Yeah. Right. But but another, well, you know, another way to do it is, is is to make sure the content's connected to you know more than just one silo. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's, that's what we think. So we're not in control of like uh, <coughs> any metaverses. You know, uh, land creation <laughs> governance yeah. decisions. That's that's kind of the whole point, right? These metaverses are going to have their own DAOs. Yes. Their own governance of community that's going to decide when when you know the the uh, the land ecosystem ecosystem needs to expand. But, you know, a, a creator, a content creator, it shouldn't be subjected to those limitations. You know, you should, if you're creating something of value within like this metaverse ecosystem, it should, you know, you should be able to reach any, any uh, different realm or experience, right? So, yeah, I totally agree. So, yeah, this is definitely the beginnings of that. So, so let's yeah, talk just, about, let's talk about the implications of what this means. Like, why, why even do interoperability? Well, you like, said, what? you said ROI. That's a big one. Yeah. 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 Ultimately, you know what? What what type of skill set is going to build out any metaverse, right? Mm-hmm. Let's let's just kind of like put our thinking caps on and, and think through this kind of like thought experiment. Okay. And uh, so the question is like, who is going to build content for the metaverse? Like, what what kind of skill set is required? Well, it's going to require a game designer, game developer, three D modeler, potentially smart contract engineers, and you need this like skill set in order to deploy engaging content. Right. There, there are low barrier types of content, like let's say regular GLBs, buildings, statues. Those are content that is largely unproductive. And the content that we like to focus on are productive pieces of NFTs. Like, for example, they generate revenue mm-hmm. or they have some sort of ability to earn a cryptocurrency, like a play to earn experience. Mm-hmm. So that productive content requires a higher level of skill set. So if that's the case, then what do you what does a platform need to provide in order to encourage that high level of skill set to come and build on your platform? And so what, what's required is focusing on their ROI, their return on investment. So if you can reduce the barrier to entry by adding tools to their repertoire, to their tool set, and increase the potential earnings by existing in multiple metaverses right from the platform. They're yeah. going to want to build on MetaZone rather than going into the individual silos to build custom content that can only be deployed there. Yeah, hundred percent. And and so that was the kind of the thought process that we were thinking through throughout the years. And it took a while for us to come to this conclusion because it's it's not easy to kind of know that there's first uh, assume that there's going to be multiple metaverses and then think of a way to have that interoperability yeah. exist between those metaverses. It's it's <coughs> incredibly complex. Cuz yeah, clearly there's something missing right in order for that to be facilitated. And the, you know, uh, it's a lot of technical frameworks. Yeah, that's right. And so like this this kind of partnership is going to help us MetaZone figure out what these frameworks are needed. What which ones are needed in yeah. order to like facilitate future additions of more metaverses within the ecosystem, right? Cuz it's the same thing with like, you know, developing early ethereum smart contracts probably they need to figure out well, what is it that like a standard smart contract developer or whatever need needed to do to interact like w- with the uh, solidity code or whatever that's right just spit out a new token right so yeah. they got to create these frameworks in order for you know the next generation of uh you know creators ecosystem creators to leverage so that they could easily do it pump these tokens out create these DAOs, create these economies create these ecosystems and here we are today yep. many years later with a very flourishing ecosystem, right? <laughs> so, yeah. 
I think we're in that stage as far as like the metaverse, figuring out what, what frameworks need to exist, what standards need to exist for, you know, verse creators to just, you know, plug into something that's a little more, uh, I don't know, efficient. Yeah. You know, and yeah, again, sure. in, in interconnected so that we can have a, a much more flourishing, you know, metaverse ecosystem overall. For sure. Yeah. I mean, ultimately what we want to do is give the tools to creators out there to make that content. And then because we're creating this platform, you make that content that the creators are making deployable in multiple metaverses and you create that efficiency that you're talking about. I mean, so that creators stick around, continue building the metaverse, right? Because there's not a single team in any, any, any metaverse out there that's going to build out the entire metaverse. It is too costly. Yeah. It it takes (laughs) way too much time and it's just not efficient. So you're any metaverse that gets generated, they're going to leverage the community help build it out and so what vol hill is doing say metaverse has already created a a creator base why don't we just tap into them and enable them to deploy the same content yeah into vault hill so yeah. so yeah this is this is a great partnership um i've met the uh, i've met most of the team there um jimmy um shout out to carlos and alex for uh you know helping us you know walk through this uh, this process um so yeah this is this has been a great collaboration so far they're doing an uh, a initial land offering here in the next couple of weeks, and then they're going to be fully launching their world here in a few months. Yeah. So um, so let's talk about their world. So it's a virtual reality world. Yep. Um, I, I don't know if it's required to have a headset. Um, it could be just uh, k- kind of like a just a generic uh, first-person sort of experience, but also you could put on the VR headset and kind of look around mm-hmm. and experience, you know, this type of higher-fidelity world, uh, but in in their kind of image and so let's see if we could let's go to their website i want i want to show kind of what they have because the design of their world is pretty amazing yeah (laughs) and once you're done pulling up that website also once we get done kind of like uh doing a deep dive into what vault hill is let's pull up like a an example of what a creator economy has has done in decentraland so We'll pull up some, uh, how many hosts currently exist in Decentraland, you know, how many metas have been created and sold. So and we can get kind of a picture of what it is we're trying to just replicate in, a, in another. Because sure. think of it as what we're about to see here is just, it's another blank canvas, essentially. Like yeah. Decentraland, when it first launched, if you guys were there early enough, it literally was a blank canvas. It was just a bunch of like grid, open grid as far as the eyes can see. Yes. You know, and then all of a sudden they deployed grass and rocks yeah, and trees yeah. and stuff on it. Now, you know, a little more of a colorful canvas, but still largely blank. Yes. And that's kind of like what we wandered around the meta, uh, Decentraland Metaverse for, for months. And we didn't see much, you know, construction, not, not much, you know, building happening. So like, what the hell's going on? There's a yeah. problem here. So that's where the MetaZone ecosystem kind of began. And, you know, through months of uh, development and onboarding creators, I mean, we have tons of creators at this point and I mean, the, the submissions are backlogged yeah, yeah. <laughs> like up the wazoo yeah <laughs> like we need tons of help to get through all the submissions and stuff but we want to see that same thing you know all the existing creators and new ones who want to you know ex- you know deploy their abilities their skills into like a different canvas environment for sure into this other reality right so and, and so speaking of canvases this is what their world looks like yeah this is what and you're working with so they have several districts and uh with around those districts are parcels or are locations where you can purchase parcels and uh and their um their kind of design is is pretty interesting they're like islands and i've seen some like concept images of early on of what the, these are going to look like and then i've seen some uh, some videos that kind of represent their world mm-hmm. and it's it's pretty impressive so I, I definitely invite you guys to go to their twitter account they have a bunch of videos that they're that they're showing um of as an example of their world and so we should see this here pretty soon like it's 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 a matter of months before they start uh, being able to let people in the world mm-hmm. so yeah it's it's a cool design it's uh it's definitely an interesting sort of new tool set that we have to build out because a lot of the creations will have to be able to be interactable with like your hands and like with like these, these different virtual reality inputs yeah. that are very different than what we are used to in Decentraland. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's no longer a point and click anymore. It's more higher fidelity. Yeah. So this is going to be uh <clears throat> so can you like, What's the expectation? Because obviously there's like a development process that we're going to have to go through to 
you know, to get to the point where the content that's being, you know, that it currently exists and the future content that's generated whenever you're going through a meta submission process, like you're going to have the option most sure. likely to do, you know, do you want your content to just exist in the Decentraland low poly universe or do you want your content to not just exist in that space, sure. but also sure. exist in what you just described a much more higher fidelity experience, but like even like the physics is different. Yeah. Right. So like <laughs> there's going to have to be some sort of uh you know, guidance in that development sure. or that creation process, right? So, yeah. So, so ultimately, um, there, so we have a bunch of content in our marketplace. So, for the basic content like buildings, it's pretty much uh, plug and play deployments in Vault Hill. Like, yeah. there, there isn't a whole lot of uh, adjusting that needs to be happening. Okay. But when it comes to more interactable experiences like Corona Zombies, Ethermon, Rovies, there has to be some adjustments by the original creators so that they, they, they're they going to have to make some updates so that anyone can interact with the same content but in Vault Hill. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, some creators are going to have to adjust some 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 aspects of their creations. Uh, but ultimately, the same NFT will be deployable in Decentraland and in Vault Hill. Mm -hmm. And so that's the main goal to create that interoperability. Mm -hmm. So... It's going to be interesting. There's a couple of things that we need to build out. This is more of like the announcement of our partnership. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're going to be talking about this a lot more often just because there's a bunch of tools that need to be uh, built. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and we, want, we want to encourage the creator base to start leveraging, you know, everything that, that Vault Hill is creating, everything that we've created so far, and build out their metaverse in whatever way you see fit. Mm-hmm. So this is exciting. Um, I'm hoping to uh, to start showcasing a lot of the stuff because the Vault Hill team has already created a meta, and we're going to be showcasing this here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, this meta potentially could generate revenue. So we'll be able to uh, talk about that in detail here, and hopefully get that deployed in Decentraland, maybe even before Vault Hill gets uh, their world up and running. Mm. Yeah, man, this is definitely. Um it's, this is a long term deal for sure. Like, and it, again, more and more MetaZone gospel preaching moments. Like, yeah. uh, Decentraland took two or three <laughs> years before it, it yeah. took off. Yeah. Same thing with Sandbox and Somnium Space and Crypto Voxels. Yeah. But I'm, I'm more speaking towards like, you know, the, the state of where the NFT market at, or NFT sector is as a whole. Like, uh, you know, it's going to take a while, I think, for like the, the, the majority sure. of the NFT zeitgeist to kind of catch up to what it is, what's happening here, just because it's, for one, there's a lot of development left yeah. ahead of us. It's more complex to but, understand. But, but just the, the value and the utility of, of these metas and the NFTs. Like w once this is achieved, like I think uh, there's going to be that aha Goldie. What's the word? Yeah, it's like uh, Not Goldilocks, but like the Eureka. The Eureka moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like once because you, you own these assets, these metas. You know, they're part of your you know on chain identity. Yep. They're part of the value you've accrued and you know through, through these ecosystems and. Then, they're granting you access to deploy this content in multiple virtual worlds. Like that, that's, uh, I mean, that's a big deal. It's yeah. It, it sounds like something we're just kind of like talking about, but, <laughs> but that's why we need to keep talking about this. And we are going to keep talking about this yeah. for the next, I mean, probably forever. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're stuck in this loop forever yeah. at this point. So <laughs> there's a lot to say. There's a lot to build. There's a lot to update you guys about. So definitely, you know, stay tuned because this is all we're going to be focused on for the next absolutely this is exciting forever, dude this is exciting because this this really proves our thesis uh that interoperability is fundamentally important to um yeah. to people who own nfts especially nfts that are deployable in the metaverse yeah so we're excited um we're excited to have vault hill launch pretty soon they're gonna have that land um sale pre like in the next two weeks or so mm. um so yeah this has been, uh, I guess, the block runner talking about MetaZone partnering with Vault Hill. There you go. So thank you guys for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. What are your thoughts about Vault Hill, Decentraland, the Metaverse, whatever it is. Uh, put the comments uh, in the section below. Like and subscribe. And, um, and yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.